Alian from Patrick and Poodles and today we are going to make some big stitch hand quilted Baptist fans. This Baptist fan motif is a really fun one to do as an overall design when doing big stitch hand quilting. We'll cover all the supplies that you need but if you're new to hand quilting make sure you check out my hand quilting 101 video. It's going to give you a great overview before we dive in. So now let's get started with Baptist fans. The first thing that we need to do to make our Baptist fans is to make our template. I like to buy these chopping mats at Dollar Tree. It's a dollar for two mats. They're a nice rigid plastic which make a really nice template plastic and they're easy to cut with scissors. So that's what I like to use. You can also use cardboard, maybe like a cereal box, in order to make your template. I've gone ahead and I've cut my piece of plastic two and a half inches by eight inches and then I used my ruler to start marking. I started my first mark, my first hole, one inch away from the edge. And on one side, I made each hole three quarters of an inch apart. On the other side, I made all my holes half an inch apart. This is going to give me a lot of ability to choose how big or how small I want to make my Baptist fans. I could choose to make my lines close together, half an inch apart. I could choose to make them an inch apart. Again, three quarters of an inch or an inch and a half apart from each other. So it allows you a lot of flexibility, which means then this template can be used over and over again for different projects. To make my holes, I like to use this hole puncher here. It creates a hole that's an eighth of an inch big. So it's a nice small hole, meaning that you get a little bit more stability when we're marking our quilt top. With our template made, we're going to go ahead and start marking. There's a different tools that you can use when you're marking your quilt top. If you have a thin hair marker, this works really well. A hair marker is going to create a crease or a line so that you're able to see that line and stitch on it. If you don't have any hair markers, I found that mechanical pencils where the lead is completely retracted, so you don't have any lead, have a similar effect to the hair marker. So if you don't have a hair marker and you have a couple of mechanical pencils around, these work great. Another option that works especially well for something that's a little bit of a darker fabric is using a chalk pencil. So this is going to leave a mark that you're able to see and stitch. I'm going to use the chalk pencil today because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. But at home, I always encourage to use whatever you have around to make it work. You're going to need two utensils for marking. So again, we talked about mechanical pencils. You need two. Or if you have one hair marker, hair marker and mechanical pencil, or today I'm going to use the hair marker and my chalk pencil. One of them is going to be your anchor point, so it's not going to move, it's going to hold that spot. And then your other utensil, in our case it's the chalk pencil, is going to be the one that rotates around and creates our arcs for our Baptist fans. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start by placing the anchor point in the first hole. I've decided that I'm going to do one inch apart Baptist fans. So this is half an inch, this is an inch. I'm going to stick my pencil in the inch mark and I'm going to rotate upwards. I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to go ahead and do all the lines that I need for this arc before I move it. So I'm going to do them one inch apart and I'm going to do four of them. One, two, three, and four. There's our first arc. We're going to continue doing the same thing all the way across. So again, wherever this point is that ended, that's where our next anchor point is for the next set of arcs. So I'm going to stick that right there, and I'm going to go ahead and mark one, two, three, four. You'll notice that right here in the end I'm pretty close to the edge but I have all this space up here because our arcs are greater at the top. So I'm still going to go ahead and mark this. I'm going to want to stitch it later. So your anchor point is going to go where that last arc finished just like normal. And you're just not going to have a lot to mark here. Two, three, four. 
When I'm stitching, I might skip this one down here if I feel like there's not a lot to stitch, but I'm definitely going to be stitching these three lines, so I want to make sure that they're marked. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start our second row. How the arcs fit together is that this point here, that last arc of our fan, that is going to finish right here. So that's how we're going to know to stack them on top of each other. Because it's going to finish right here, we actually need this, the first fan on subsequent rows is a little trickier than the rest of them. So for this one, what we actually need to do, instead of setting our anchor point, we need to set our final point. So, one, two, three, four. This is the line for my last arc. And that's where I'm going to start my pencil. And based on where my chalk pencil is, I'm going to set my anchor point. So my anchor is like off my quilt top. And that's just for this first one so that we can make sure to get those lines in there. Like that. If we didn't do that, and we simply just started here, we would end up with an arc here that went all the way across. So if we hadn't done that and added these two lines, this arc here would have gone all the way across, which wouldn't look the same as all the other ones in our quilt top. So for consistency, we always want to make sure that we're capturing that first, that first arc, that first little bit. Anchor point's going to go right down here, just like it did for that first row, where that last arc ends. And we're going to do just like we did for the first row and mark one, two, three, four. You'll notice that on this row it's really nice because that last one is going to fit into that V shape that's made from the first row. So they all interlock into each other really nicely. You'd want to go ahead and mark your entire quilt top. Uh, if you have a really large quilt top, perhaps you want to mark maybe three or four rows. Go ahead and stitch those and then go back and mark some more. So you don't have to sit here and mark the entire quilt top. For something small like this, which is going to be a throw pillow, I might go ahead and mark the whole thing. That way I can just sn snuggle on the couch and enjoy my quilting time. But you'll want to go ahead and you want to mark it all up. And then let's talk about how you actually go about stitching it. So one thing to note is that I decided to do four arcs. You could decide to do three, you could do five, you could do six, you could do two, you could do as many as you want. And based on how many you do, it's going to determine where you start and where you stop your stitching. So for something like this, I've done four, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that when I'm stitching, that when I'm stitching down this line here, I end at the bottom because that allows me to then start stitching this one right away. I want to be able to travel across the layers. I don't want to end up that I have to tie a knot every time I finish an arc or a Baptist fan. That would just be really, really tedious. So for efficiency, when I go on this arc down here, then I'm ready to start this one here. So to figure that out, I know I want to end here. So I'm going to actually take my my pencil or my, my finger, and I'm going to trace myself backwards. So if I went here, down here, up, down. So this is my starting point for my Baptist pants. If I start down here, I'm going to be stitching up, travel across the layers, stitch down, travel across the layers, stitch up, travel across the layers, stitch down. Then because I'm here, I can travel to this starting spot and do the same thing over again. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. If I had a Baptist fan with five arcs, so let's just create one. That logic that we just did with four arcs wouldn't work the same because if I did that up, down, up, down, up. I'm not in the spot I want to be to start the next arc. So again, with odd number of arcs, you would want to make sure to do the same thing that we did here and say, okay, if I want to end here, let me trace my route back up and see where I want to start, which would be 
up at the top of the first arc instead of at the bottom. This would allow that when I travel, I'd end up down at the bottom, ready to start the next one. So let's see what that looks like when we're actually stitching. So we're going to travel up, I'm going to stop right about here. So this is where I want to be, like this is my hard stop line. So I'm going to be able to make one more stitch that's about the same length as the other stitches. Travel between the layers, so you can't see my needle here, you can't see my needle here, it's between my two layers. Come up on that next line. And then I'm going to rotate so that I'm able to stitch down. Same thing, one more stitch, traveling between those layers to come up on the next line. Time to travel to our next starting spot for that second fan in our row. So between those layers again, and I'm going to come up here. And now I am in a good position to start the next one. to continue stitching this way all across the row. Once I get to the end of the row, I'm going to tie a knot and bury my thread. I'm going to start with a new thread up here at the next row. I'm not going to make it all the way to the end of the row on the thread that I have left, and that's okay. Whenever I run out, I'm going to bury my thread and just start a new piece at the spot that I'm at. But I always make sure to tie a knot and bury my thread at the end very difficult design to try to travel and go backwards towards the left hand side of the quilt top. It's really a design that works best left to right. So at the end, bury your knot and start again with a new thread. And I'm going to continue stitching this way across my entire quilt top until it's completely quilted with Baptist fans. So that's how you hand quilt and mark Baptist fans using the template that you make. For more hand quilting and quilting videos, be sure to check out my channel. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.